Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to the very first episode of Fortnite In Depth. It's always good to be doing a new game on In Depth, and we're going to be branching into Fortnite. Episode 1 is going to be on weapon stats and tier list. We're going to be talking about some of the base stats of the weapons, their rarity, if the rarity matters, and which weapons just plain outperform each other. So we'll have a tier list. For instance, is a scoped rifle better than a burst rifle? Or are the pistols better than the submachine guns? Or is it true that assault rifles are just the best things in general? In today's episode, we've got a lot of stuff going on so I do hope you enjoy it and let's start off with the question that you've all been asking do rare weapons really make a difference and the short answer is yes yes they do they do make a significant amount of difference depending on which weapon so it is almost always worth your time to pick them up rarer weapons have different amounts of damage reload times and recoil. The damage is going to be by far the most interesting property because that changes your damage per second, your time to kill, and generally how lethal you are as a player. So as a quick example here in the beginning of the episode, I wanted to compare the most common assault rifle, the gray M4 auto rifle, to the gold legendary scar. It's about as extreme of an example as I can make and I wanted to introduce you to my Fortnite testing dummy. Today we're going to be looking at her as if she had 100 shield and 100 100 health and when we do more specific episodes in the future I'll show you different combinations but we'll just assume the worst possible enemy somebody that is just completely loaded up on shield and if you run into them with the gray n4 rifle it'll take four headshots to kill or seven body shots depending on which one you go for however if you have a gold scar it could take three headshots to kill or six body shots meaning that it's one less shot to kill to the head or one less shot to kill to the body depending on which one you're aiming for now this is a assuming an ideal scenario. So this is kind of the theory behind the weapon. And as we all know that theory and practice are different things. And in practice in this game, you're going to be quite busy. You're going to be building. It's going to be chaotic. You're going to miss some shots. They're going to be shooting you. Your palms are going to get sweaty and things may not go according to plan. So what we're going to assume is that you open up your fight with one solid, well-rounded headshot, and then everything else gets messier and you need body shots to kill. In this scenario, if you get one headshot with a gray M4 rifle, you'll need five more body shots to finish off the enemy. Or if you're using the gold scar and you get that one headshot, it could be four body shots. So more or less one less shot to kill again. And this is between two tiers of weapons, extreme tiers. Generally speaking, as you move up a tier of weapon, it's going to take one less shot to kill or definitely two tiers. And the damage per second is going to go up as well. Now this is considering a high health enemy, somebody that's lower health or that has not, you know, incomplete shields or something. You might be able to one tap with a rare weapon, whereas you could not do so with a very common weapon. And we also need to take a look at raw damage per second because that applies to shooting down buildings, structures, ramps, uh, stupid steel that everybody seems to have while I just have wood. And when we take a look at the DPS on the gold scar, it's 235, whereas the gray M4 is only 165, meaning that the gold scar will shred through buildings much, much quicker and make them less able to kind of build around you. And generally speaking, as sort of a rule of thumb, as an offhand estimation in your head, each higher rarity of a weapon will give you you about 5% more DPS approximately. Some a little more, some a little bit less, but just imagine as you pick up a weapon, your DPS goes up 5%, and pretty much every two tiers, you're guaranteed one less shot to kill. We've talked a lot about damage, but there are other things that change when you pick up higher rarities of weapons. The recoil changes the hip fire box spread per shot and the overall kick. I listed recoil before, and what the recoil changes is the overall hip fire box spread per shot and the overall kick of the hip fire box. So a low tier weapon will that hip you shoot it once and the hip fire box will start spreading and get pretty wide pretty quickly and the box itself will kick and shake and sort of distort your aim and make it more difficult to use. Or as a higher tier weapon it would not spread as much per shot and you could shoot it much much faster and keep that box smaller and it wouldn't kick or shake around nearly as much. However one thing that does not appear to be happening is that the overall maximum and minimum size of the hip fire spread box doesn't seem to change. So if you crouch, your first couple shots with a gray weapon will be about the same as with a gold weapon. And if you're running and spraying and shooting the maximum size of your box, your maximum inaccuracy doesn't seem to be much worse either. 
So we've talked a lot about pistols and rifles and burst rifles and submachine guns, but you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned shotguns yet, and it seems kind of a shame because shotguns are so important to the meta of this game. They dominate close quarters combat, building ramps on top of people and shooting down at them with shotguns, or just corner checking people in the face is probably the most common type of combat that you will have, and it's probably one of the most important skills to master if you ever want to win games. Shotgun rarity matters more at range than it does up close. The higher tier shotguns do reload faster and they do deal more damage, but they don't deal as much damage or as significantly more damage than the rifles. And the reason for that is because that pretty much all of the shotguns, tactical or pump, can one-shot the devil out of people up close. A tack shotgun can one-shot people, a pump shotgun can one-shot a person. It's very, very easy to do and the rarity of the shotgun doesn't make much difference at just a gray one versus like a green or purple or blue. It's all about the same when you're one-shotting people. It starts making difference when you get further away from your enemies, when you start having these goofy mid-range shotgun fights, when you start missing, when you're kind of swiping your shotgun and only hitting a little bit of the shot. The less accurate you are with a shotgun, the more the rarity will matter. If you're really good with a shotgun and you always get headshots and you always use it close range, it won't matter if you're using a gray shotgun or a purple one, they're pretty much always going to insta-kill people. So far, I've mostly talked about all the good things you get with weapon rarity and what it does and doesn't affect and what it changes, but there are a few weapons where weapon rarity doesn't always change your shots to kill. There are a couple of outliers here, and as an example, I wanted to compare the bolt-action sniper rifles. If you pick up a blue bolt-action sniper rifle on the ground and shoot her in the head, it will kill her instantly in one shot. And if you shoot her twice in the body, she will die. Now, unfortunately, it won't get one shots to the body. That would be a little bit unfair. However, if you see a gold sniper rifle laying on the ground and you think, I'm going to change out sniper rifles because I'm going to get more damage and more one shot kills, you would be a little bit disappointed because a gold bolt action sniper rifle is still a one shot kill headshot and still two to the body. While it may deal five more total damage per shot, it's not going to affect your overall shots to kill and the DPS is only going to be very, very slightly higher in this scenario. So as you're playing, keep in mind that weapon rarity does not matter for bolt-action sniper rifles, semi-automatic sniper rifles, and any of the launchers. The gold rocket launcher is just as good as the normal one, and the higher tier grenade launchers are just as good as the lower tier ones. They're basically the same, so while these weapons may reload slightly faster, they may be dealing slightly more damage, the effect of them, what you will feel, your shot to kill and how quickly you murder people are all going to be about the same, so I wouldn't risk my life for getting a better sniper rifle or getting a better rocket launcher. Now, we've talked quite a lot about weapon rarity and how much a rare weapon does this and a not rare weapon will do that, but I wanted to also talk about weapon tiers in this game. It's very important to know which weapons outperform each other at certain ranges and which weapons, in this case, just statistically dominate each other. And I wanted to start off with an uncommon one and take an opinion that I don't think a lot of people are going to agree with, and that's on shotguns. Tactical shotguns have roughly double the overall DPS of pump shotguns. Pump shotguns deal an absurd amount of damage and can one-shot pretty much anybody with a headshot in the current meta of the game, which isn't inherently a bad thing, and double pump is annoying, but I don't think that's going to be around for much longer. However, if you want to look at it from a pure mathematical point of view, a tack shotgun has a much faster overall DPS than a pump shotgun, and in an extended fight, it's going to be much better for you. That being said, I do prefer the tack shotguns because I'm kind of a novice at the game still and I'm learning and it's easier for me to continually pump out damage instead of going for the high risk, high reward insta kills. You'll see many of the better players like Avery and Ninja and those kind of guys going for the pump shotguns even though they have a lower overall DPS, those guys aren't going to miss their first shot and they will be getting those insta kills. But it's just interesting to note if you're not a great player, if you're not super confident in your shots, tactical shotguns are going to be your friend. And when it comes to damage per second, shots to kill, time to kill, and pretty much every single performance variable, 
fully automatic assault rifles will outperform burst and scoped rifles 100% of the time. Even the worst, like, low-tier gray M4 assault rifle is going to be better than any tier rarity burst or scoped rifle. I will add a slight caveat in that the burst rifles put out a surprising amount of DPS throughout the burst. They're kind of fast, but overall, with the delay and the recoil and how they handle, they are statistically dominated by the auto rifles. Scoped rifles are quite bad at the moment, though I know that there is a patch coming up for them as well. The submachine gun tier is a little bit of a weird one. We're going to mostly look at it in terms of raw damage per second, because considering how many shots it takes to kill somebody, I think that is the most important SMG stat. And in regards to that, a regular submachine gun will outperform a suppressed submachine gun, and a suppressed submachine gun will outperform a tactical submachine gun. Of note, this is a little bit interesting because the regular submachine gun actually has the lowest damage per shot across the board. However, it has a much faster rate of fire and a larger magazine, so the overall DPS is going to be higher than the others. And of course, you have the added advantage of being suppressed with the suppressed submachine gun, and the tactical submachine gun has a slightly different uh, hip fire box recoil properties on it, but all of these aren't very good weapons. I would take the regular SMG over over any of the other two any day, but they're all kind of outperformed by other guns, which we'll get to in just a minute. In the pistol category, just so that you know, the suppressed pistol will outperform the regular pistol, and the suppressed pistol in itself has a surprisingly high DPS that is more comparable to that of a low-tier assault rifle, though it doesn't have nearly as good of a spread, but in medium to close range, you can spam it really fast and kill people very, very quickly. Moving along, and just sort of generalities here, uh, when it comes to fully automatic weapons, an automatic rifle is better than a suppressed pistol, and a suppressed pistol is probably going to be better than any submachine gun, though I will add a little asterisk. The regular SMG, not the suppressed one and not the tactical one, but the regular SMG does have a higher DPS than the suppressed pistol, though the shots to kill is kind of stupidly high and the handling is a little bit funny. In my experience, given how easy it is to handle the suppressed pistol and its very comparable DPS, I would say that it will probably outperform a suppressed or regular SMG for most users. So grab a rifle or grab a pistol or grab a submachine gun. And of course, shotguns dominate up close. We know that shotguns are fantastic, dirty, and dangerous, but it's harder to compare a shotgun to these other weapons because their properties are so different. All right, guys, that is all for the very first episode of Fortnite In Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. Quite a lot of facts and figures to take in. I think that future episodes are going to be more simple. We're going to shrink them down and focus on one gun or one aspect at a time. But I did feel that it was very important to discuss rarity and weapon tiers first to kind of give you a basis on what to look for, what to hunt for, and what's worth risking your life for when you're playing Fortnite online. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.